Hi, this is Justin from Ajar Productions. So hopefully by now you've seen the responsive layouts in action. In this series of videos, I want to go into a little more depth to show you how to actually set up your InDesign file so that you can export it with responsive layouts. I've got my starting document here in InDesign, and to keep things really simple, I've just got a single page layout. That way we won't have to rework a bunch of pages. But normally what you want to do is to create your entire, what I would call your default layout or your main layout. So that's the one you think most of the people are going to be looking at. In this case, it's a large desktop layout or what could also be a landscape tablet layout. So I lay out all my pages in this main layout and then create my alternate layout, which I'll show you momentarily. Now in a later video on liquid layout, I'll show you how to set up liquid layout rules. And you'll find that really helpful when you create alternate layouts because it'll mean a lot less repositioning of all the page items. But right now we're just going to start super basic. I want to walk you through the steps. I've got my main layout. It's already set up. I've even got some animation on these top level items. And what I want to do is go over to my layout in the pages panel and click on this little arrow next to the name of the layout and say create alternate layout. That's going to bring up a dialog. And this dialog is pretty intelligent because it knows that you're creating your first alternate layout. And what it does is swap the width and the height. So you're either going from portrait to landscape or landscape to portrait. So we're going to look at that first in this video. And so it's automatically done that for me. And then it's going to preserve a bunch of things and create new style groups for me. That way, if I edit something in my second layout, it doesn't overwrite it in my first layout, right? If I change a paragraph style, it, it won't go back and ripple through to my original layout. So I'm going to click OK, and that will create a second layout. You can see that in the Pages panel. And I'm going to double click on that page. So we can go there. Otherwise, in the main window of InDesign, you can just scroll through. The layouts just appear sequentially. You see the organization only in the Pages panel. So I'm going to hit the W key just to uh, get it out of the display mode so I can see all my artwork and everything. And you can see how it just took all the stuff from my original layout and put it into the second one regardless of size. Again, in the Liquid Layouts video, you'll see how to create Liquid Layout rules first before you create your alternate layouts and then that will save you a bunch of time in repositioning these. We're just starting from scratch on this one, and I will show you what you need to do, which is basically you just need to reposition these things. You need to figure out how this is going to look good in a vertical layout. So one thing that I did before this was kind of plan this image and have an idea of how this main image, since it's going to cover the whole size of the screen, I want it to kind of fit in different variations. So I'll start by taking everything except that image. So I'll just shift click. I'm going to try it or maybe it's command click. I'll try shift click. There we go. And now I've got everything except that image. I'm just going to move it off to the side so I can work with this main image. And I'll start by just getting the image in position in the top left hand corner and sizing it so it fits to the bottom right hand corner. Now what I want to do is take this image, move it around, change the size so it sort of makes sense. So I think I want to get it to come down as far as possible. There we go. Just grabbing this handle in the middle so I can manipulate the artwork inside. Now I want to shrink the width, so I'm actually going to switch to my direct selection tool and zoom out until I can see the bottom handle of this. And I'm just going to command shift and drag this down so it gets to about the width that I'm working with in this layout. Getting closer, let me zoom in. And I'll just see if I can reposition this so it sort of makes sense. That's getting pretty good, and I'm running out of real estate vertically. You can see there's a big challenge here with going from a super wide layout to a super narrow layout. So that is, I would say that's reasonably good. And hopefully, if I look at this, it seems to be covering the entire height. And now I have some rethinking to do because my artwork is all in the top of this page. I'm probably going to want to take my text and move it down to the bottom for this particular layout. 
So when I start by doing that, I'll get the selection tool and drag this stuff down over here. I'll take this text, this subheading, and go into a paragraph palette and make it left aligned. And then I want to align these together. So I'll go to the Align panel and align them to the left. There we go. And now you can see I still have a lot of extra space there. So I need to bring down the size of this text. Go into the Paragraph panel, left align that. I do have to keep bringing this down, and now it's getting so small that I think maybe I actually want this to be two lines. So let me see how big this ended up being. It's 100 points and it still fits. So I want my heading to be at least that big. Maybe 120. Let's see if we can make that two lines instead. So I'm going to take these main rectangles and shrink those down. Take the orange rectangle, make that bigger. And then I'm going to change this text frame so it fits. So I need to make a little more space there. What if I select all of it and I get this text just a little bit closer together? I can fit all of it there. Now I might want to make some different adjustments here. And looking at it, I don't like this big empty space here. So what I might actually do is drag this down, take my orange rectangle, and move that up. And hopefully that'll save me from having some big empty space there. Move this up. And this is a rather simple layout, so you know, potentially I could have something else at the bottom. But this is just a little bit better. And I think what I'll do is I'll go back to centering these items. You can see there's a lot of rework. That's what I really want to show you is you have to spend time designing and creating these alternate layouts. So now I've got a second layout. I'm reasonably happy with this. Uh, I might want to change the animations a bit. These all come in, but uh, you know we could, we could see how they look in the output. So I'll save the document, and now that I have two layouts, I can export them. What you're going to see in this document when I export it now is that I have a landscape version and a portrait version of the same pixel dimensions. N5 is going to recognize that, and it's going to export it accordingly. So the easiest way to export it is to go up to N5 and choose Easy Export Wizard. And since I have multiple layouts and the number of pages in those layouts match, and I have the appropriate license, N5 says Responsive Layouts Detected and Applied. Now it can detect them no matter what, but it's only going to apply them in the Easy Export Wizard if you have the gold license so that you can export this. And now all I'd have to do is select which one of these I want and click Next and choose Font Rendering, click Next, and a title, and I'm done. But what I want to show you are the full details in the Complete Export dialog. So let's take a look at that. I'll go up to N5 and choose Export HTML5 with N5, and you see how that option looks here. Now when you export with a full dialog and you have the appropriate alternate layouts that match each other, the place where you'll find the responsive option is under the export range. So like I said, when we scrolled in the main layout window, N5 just sets the pages sequentially. So if we exported all pages, then it would export the landscape page and then the portrait page in sequence, like page one and then page two. And that's not what we want, right? We might want that if we're using our alternate layouts for a different purpose, like an organizational purpose, that might be handy. But in this case, we're using them actually as responsive layouts. So with all of that there and the license in place, the responsive layout option appears in the export range. We also have the option to export individual layouts. But I'm going to choose the responsive layouts, and we'll see how that works. And you can choose any format. I'm going to choose the slider fade-in format, just because it's 
simple and clear. And that's all I'm going to do for the export right now. Let's go ahead and click OK and see how it looks. I'm looking at the output in Google Chrome. It's quite large because I'm recording on a very small screen dimension so you can see all my details in InDesign really closely. The issue is that this layout is bigger than the browser. So if I scroll over you can see the entire layout. That's enough to get started. Let's just scroll down and we'll see how the layout switches. There we go. And the animations play when it switches too. So here's the portrait layout. And there's the landscape layout. And because we only have these two layouts, and N5 recognizes that these two layouts are the same pixel dimensions rotated, it switches these based on your orientation. So if I went down, for example, and got this orientation, and then decided to shrink it vertically, you can see it switches into the landscape layout. That's because I only have two layouts and I'm switching them based on orientation. Before we move on and create a third layout, let's actually set this to automatically scale to the window. So I'll go back to InDesign and I'll go back up to my export dialog. If I was doing this with the Easy Export Wizard, it's going to basically take care of this for me. But if you want to do this in the full dialog because there are specific options you want to set, this is where you find it. You go into Advanced and under Desktop Scaling for this I'll choose Best Fit and I will go down and say Use Desktop Scaling for the Mobile Device Viewport Zoom. That means it will use this scaling for both desktop and mobile devices. Then I'll go ahead and click OK and we'll let it export. Now open this in the browser and you can see it's fit into the window. So no matter how big I scale, it stays fit in the window. Now I have it set to best fit, so it's not filling the width. I could set it to fit the width, so it, it filled that, but then it would have to scroll. So you can see that's really easy incremental scaling. We can see both of those. In the next video, we'll continue with what we've learned and create an additional layout.